Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to Think Big with Dan Cosm and our guest today is Matthew. So Matthew, if you, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Sure. I'm Matthew Corzine. I'm living in Miami and I also split my time in New York where I own and operate Matthew Corzine Studio where I'm an acting coach. I'm also a coach uh, for mindset, entrepreneurs and executives as well. And um, we have schools in Miami, New York, and now LA. Awesome. So can you just um, tell our audience, like, how did you get into coaching in the first place? Like, what made you want to pursue that? You know, I started as an actor and um, I think my acting teacher in New York, I was mesmerized by, and I felt that his work was really transformational and, and um, that somebody can get something out of you. Um, I don't know. I thought that was the most amazing thing on the planet. I've just always been attracted to transformation. I've always loved that you can have an aha moment or something can really change rather quickly in somebody. Um, and if that you're somebody that can facilitate that or help unblock people. I don't know. I've always been mesmerized. It's kind of like magic to me, like sense. a magic magic show or something. I'm like, I, I just thought that was watching people change. It's just really incredible to be but, part of that. But I guess like just more specifically, right? Like it's one thing to be an actor and you have a great coach, but to actually go and say, listen, like, I want to coach people myself. So just usually, you know, tell us about that journey. Like what specifically kind of made you want to go into this line yeah. of work? Yeah. I mean, I didn't move to New York to be an acting coach or graduate college and be like, I'm going to be an acting teacher. Like I definitely, that was not conscious to me, but I think I, 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 I'd have to go a little back. I directed, I was a natural leader. I would always like help my friends with auditions and direct things. So I was always being a leader. So I don't think it was that strange that I ended up being an acting coach and an acting teacher. But I think, yeah, I think it was from my acting teacher in New York. I studied at Carnegie Hall Studios and um, my teacher was Robert X. Modica and watching him teach the technique that I teach. I just knew that one day I wanted to do this and I knew he didn't take on apprentices or assistants or interns like that just wasn't, he was very old school. So just from directing shows in New York, I just started to accidentally coach people and I had a stage manager or company manager of a show I directed off Broadway and she said, said, um, you should start a class of like how you run these rehearsals. And she really inspired me. This is back 23 years ago. And she picked up a phone and called a rehearsal studio and I booked a space and I started with one class and I was waiting tables and I just fell in love and knew that it felt so good to be doing that. And it felt so horrible to be waiting tables that I was like, I have to find a way to do this other thing. And I felt like I had some agency and control of my career as opposed to being an actor where I had to wait for people to either validate me or cast me or give me permission to do my job. Felt like as an acting coach, I can work with anybody at any time and just decide to start a class. And I, I think I liked having my own business too. So I think, I think that's how it, that's how it occurred. And I was waiting tables and teaching in the beginning. And then after a year, I went full time, which is pretty unheard of. I was 28 in New York City, waiting tables, living the dream as an actor. And I transitioned into being an acting coach, a teacher and owning my own studio. Yeah, Makes so sense. I didn't set out to I didn't set out to do that at all. So when it comes yeah. to your studio today, can you just tell us? Because I'm curious, how does it work, right? Because you mentioned that you spend time between Miami and New York. So I'm assuming that you probably have other teachers. Like, what does it look like for you in terms yeah. of teaching folks and scalability for your business? That's a great question. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, Miami, we have three classes. I teach one of them, and then my associates teach two of them. And then I fly to New York, I teach three classes, and then my associates in New York teach the rest of the week. Um, and then LA, I'm trying to replicate that model, you know, because once you kind of have it down, it kind of reproduces itself. But it's it's hard to build something in a city that I'm not in all the time. So I find that I can't replicate myself perfectly or my personality. And that's kind of been the draw of the work of the studio. So yeah, it's been challenging to uh, scale it because it's personality based. You know, and now I have a following so it's hard to replicate it without me it's it's not an easy it's 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 not easy to do that 
But do you think it's something that you could do like over Zoom or does it have to be in person? Oh, hey, listen, the pandemic, I had nine Zoom classes and I think I made maybe made more money that year than I ever made, which is so bizarre. Maybe it was my PPP loans, but like um, I, I pivoted to Zoom and I worked my ass off for 2020, 2021. I think I worked more than I ever worked because I was so scared about it, nervous about it and didn't know. So I cut my prices and I went on Zoom, you know, and I, I still have one class on Zoom and we're doing this on Zoom. I coach on Zoom each week. Yeah, I mean, I, I have one class now left on Zoom. Yeah, and I love that. I think it's great. And I don't want nine of them anymore on Zoom, but like I like having one. Right. So that was a that was a gift of the pandemic to even right. know that I could do this or or the technique that I teach the Meisner technique that it even translates to a Zoom medium and it works it works great you throw people in breakout rooms to run their lines you bring them back you have everyone turn their camera off and you can run an acting scene that looks like it was filmed and there's really good work that you can still do in a Zoom class especially with the Meisner technique so yeah I'm I'm. I, I was really blessed and I pivoted very early that first week I started my classes on Zoom. So I, I, I took off right away. Makes sense. So in terms of, you know, the way that your class is structured, like how do you pick and choose, you know, does somebody have to be qualified, have experience to work with you or like, what is your target customer per se? I mean, that's good. Like Miami they tend to have to work with my associates first and build the foundation and then they can move in with me um, unless they had some New York training or some exact uh, technique training of the Meisner technique, which is what I teach. Um, if they've had a solid base of that, I'll put them in my class first. Um, but if not, they got to get that foundation down. And you also want to weed out, you want to see who's serious and who's going to really commit to this. New York's a little different because some people with certain amounts of experience and but they haven't had my technique, I'll throw them in me they're a match for me schedule wise i mean there's more going on in new york there's more schools in new york there's more actors in new york it's a little more cha- and i teach more in new york yeah it's a little more challenging yeah so that that is a different criteria because it's new york so I'll, I'll take somebody who's done five broadway shows but they haven't done my class but i'm like oh that type of personality it's perfect for me here like i, I can throw that person into my class yeah so I take more beginners to the technique in New York. In Miami, they have to go through my associates first because um, it's a smaller school and it's a smaller environment. Does that answer that question? Yeah, yeah. So what would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing in the business right now? I think it's... um. I think that the, now that the pandemic is not a pandemic, getting people to commit. I think there's so much going on that people are doing everything. So getting people to like, I'm going to do this acting class and I'm going to commit to to X amount of time. I think right now it's harder to get people to commit to things, especially in New York. Yeah, so I, how I do think you, it's, I think it's so harder. in terms of committing, I mean, like, what is your strategy? Are you, you know, do you try to get them to? I you know, threaten set- them. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I mean, listen, you're, you're, you're doing a passion and a craft that demands that you commit to it, right? So it's you, 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 there has to be a level of seriousness to do my class. You know, if someone's like, I'm just going to try acting for a little bit. I don't know if I'm the right studio or the right coach. I don't really want that type of uh, person's intention. I, I really want the person that's like, I'm really hungry and I really want to be an actor and I'm called to this and I know that it's going to demand something of me and I have to give something up to get it. Like I want those people. And we say to people, hey, you have to have a three month commitment to begin this work. I mean, not everybody okay. follows through, of course, life happens, but we do say with integrity, three months is a good start to see if this is for you. 90 okay. days. So it's more yeah. of like a verbal, you know, kind of, it's not like it's you're a making a mistake. Thing. No, yeah. they, they pay for a month at a time, but it's a verbal agreement and integrity that this is what it demands to build the foundation. Makes sense. So how do you get the word out about your business? I mean, that's interesting. How did you hear of me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think Instagram has just been a great tool. Like um, my students posting photos from class or videos of class and then their friends seeing it and um, just being in the biz for 23 years. um, I think social media is the best. I don't really do any advertising. Once in a while, I'll run an ad, um, but it's mostly... Um, tagging people and them sharing it and stories and word of mouth has been really, really a great thing for me. Yeah, for sure. So in terms of scalability, like what is the vision, right? Like you talked about, 
potentially, you know, having classes in different parts of the country, like what are you trying to get to, at least in terms of revenue? Like, you know, what is your current monthly revenue and what is if the revenue number that you're really striving for in 2024? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I want to say exact numbers here, sure, but sure. like, you know, I mean, everybody wants, once you get a taste of stuff and more money is more opportunity, right? And a little more freedom to do what you want. And I'm really big on why you want to do what you want to do. And, um, uh, really living in the future, like you already have it. So you start attracting it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm also believe in loving what you have when you have it. Right. So it's, right. it's, it, I want to dream big, but I also want to love where I'm at. So I don't, I don't right. have the pressure that I need to do anything more, but I think hiring people I've trained and I love and expanding this. Cause I know that it's transformational and I think people need more meaning and more art and more something that commits them to something greater than themselves on this planet. So I know the need for it is there. I mean, I'd love to be in all the major cities. I'd love to teach in Europe. I'd love to do master classes around the world. I would love to, you know, go to colleges and do this for a weekend. And I've done a little bit of that. Um, I would love that to be booked. You know, I mean, I'd like to double where I'm at now. And, and of course, more there's more employees and too, you know, there's more, right. you know, more people, more headaches, more money, more problems, but you have better ones and you just get better at dealing with them. Um, I, I don't feel I'm in a rush. Yeah, I also want to do a, I'm, I'm in the process of doing a reality show based on my class that would be pitched to Netflix and or HBO. So that would be really cool. And I, I'd love to do a TV show of what I do. I think that would be really cool. And like, that's a dream of mine. And I know that would bring in great money eventually. Yeah, and just keep keep going, but not, I'm not, attached if LA works or doesn't work. It's okay. I got New York. I got Miami. Makes sense. So, you know, what is the role of technology? Like you mentioned Zoom, but like how else do you use technology when it comes to your business? I mean, everything's, we have QuickBooks, right? So that's all online and we do our payroll through that. And I mean, Zoom, yeah, what we're doing right now, me doing a podcast. I mean, Instagram um, is a huge thing for my business with actors and artists and self-taping and self-promoting. And I do videos, TikTok now, I, I do videos all the time of just, hey, quick little acting tip or quick little mindset thing of how the brain works and how to get out of your head today. You know what I mean? So like, I, I just been doing those quick things and I never thought I'd be someone that would do that. And like, I'm doing it and I, I really like doing them. It's really cool, you know? So, um, I mean, that's everything. I, I feel like you my whole life now is technology and on some level, I'm always working. So it's my own business too. You know, it's a business, but it's also a coaching business, and it's a artist space, and it's acting training. It's all of that. It's all of those things. Do you get good traction on TikTok and uh, Instagram? No, I mean TikTok. It, it, I'm still so fairly new. Um, but Instagram, yeah, Instagram's pretty pretty good. And I do podcasts. I do stuff like this. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not in the millions. You know what I mean? But like, I think that's been a good thing for me. Yeah. yeah. And and I and I hire a social media person, and she does my videos, and she runs it, and she takes stuff from class, and she uh, formats it, and does all that. So. Um, I don't have to do all that, you know, which is great. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, obviously now in 2023, people are looking for ways to use AI for their business. So do you currently use AI or, and if not, like, do you see it playing a role in your business, you know, as things kind of go forward? Yeah, I don't know enough about it right now. Um, I don't currently use it. I'm not against it. I'm sure we all will on some level, right? Just like the ATMs replace tellers, you know, whatever. I'm sure that people are threatened and frightened and um, dealing all sorts of things, especially being in the arts, right? I, I don't think anything will, you know, like TV and radio didn't replace live performances. Nothing replaces that, right? Theater will always live. Um, so I, I do believe that, that original work and listen, artificial intelligence isn't going to have the same life experience. It can duplicate life experience, but it can't originate life experience, right? Only people can originate life experience. So I think that's my world that concerns me is art, right? And the work and the writing and the acting. Um, I don't want that to be replaced. Makes sense. And live, so, live theater, I know live theater won't be replaced, but... Yeah, and that, yeah. I mean, I view AI as more of like a supplement. Like it's not kind of, you know... Yeah, I see like, it as know, a supplement too. And I yeah, think that's a good yeah. way to see it. Yeah, for sure. It's not going to be like robots doing live performances or coaching for you, but maybe AI, <laughs> maybe helping you with, you know, tasks in the business, things like that. I, I'm for that. I could always use more help. I think that, yeah, I think that's great. Listen, living in two, working in two cities, you know, and having businesses in three of them, sure. 
more help is great. Makes sense. So what would you say is your top business priority now that we're wrapping up 2023? Setting up a powerful 2024. To say, I think you, when you run a business, you run two businesses. You run your current one and you run your future one. So you're running two at the same time. So I'm really big on what's happening right now, being out of the past and um, creating a future that I love. So I'm, I think right now the, I'm wrapping up in setting myself up powerfully for a compelling 2024. And listen, I, my, my, where I, I'm hired by um, artists and actors that hire me to be their coach, right? So like, I know the world doesn't run out of that, but you do have to replenish that. And especially doing classes that are ongoing, you have to love the people you currently have and attract the new people because people move on, you know, people live their lives or they have an expiration date with you or people do what they do. And then they, you know, the, the level of disappointment in running a business, you have to have a high threshold for disappointment. Makes I mean, sense. It, you, you have to have a, I mean, that's my business advice to anybody running a business. Like disappointment and living in the unknown and letting go of control has to be, you have to be into that some level. Makes sense. So what would you say? I mean, speaking of advice, like what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you started this business? I mean, don't believe your thoughts, you know, all of them. Uh, you're not your thoughts. I think I think it's mindset training that I didn't have. I had a lot of uh, anxiety and depression and need to get out of myself. So that really uh, motivated me, which I'm really grateful for. But I didn't have any emotional regulation and emotion. Uh, I didn't have any um, skills in navigating my programming, my patterns, how mindset uh, plays such a big, what do they say? Everything is 20% talent and 80% psychology. I mean, that that's high. So I think my, I was all instincts and nerves. And I think I made a lot of mistakes. And I, I wish I had mindset training when I was younger, but I probably couldn't even hear it or get it. So I, you know, you get it when you get it, right? Like you can't, but I think the importance of your mindset and um, you getting out of your own way and knowing how to make your mind work for you rather than against you, because your brain's job is to protect you from pain. I mean, that's just what it does. So it's in old patterns and stories running the show, but all the goods are in the unknown and vulnerability and the things that you haven't done yet. So you, you, you got to get out of the old, you got to go against your programming to get to the goods, to take a risk. I mean, running your own business, that's a risk, especially me at 28 in the arts being an acting coach back then. I mean, I know it's only 23 years, but that was, that was pretty controversial and avant-garde that a younger kid was putting a shingle out saying I'm teaching acting. Like people were like very jarred. Right. No, yeah. yeah like maybe, sure. maybe now it's a little more like everyone's a coach. I feel like everyone's, a, I guess, no matter what field you're in, you feel like everyone does it. You know, if you're a photographer, everyone's a photographer, right? Like yeah. you see it everywhere, but I feel like everyone's a coach, you know, right. I'm sure the people in my space who I follow and I'm, we're all coaches, you know, so, right. or everybody's an acting coach, you know, or something, but like, um, I mean, I know that's not true, but um, yeah, I, I would say mindset Mindset is um, everything, Dan. And I wish I had that, an understanding of that and a working order of that when I was younger. But I, I think I was all impulse, which which did make me build a business, but that wasn't right. sustainable. Uh, you know, I was, I was mad. I was angry. Like, that's kind of how I built the business, you know, and that's right. not sustainable. You, you'll just burn out and everyone will hate you, you know, eventually, you know, so like I had to learn a lot of lessons, a lot of hard ways and I'm still learning. Right. I mean, that's, what's great about life. Right. right. I, I still want to be a beginner on many levels. Right. I, I want to still be a beginner. I still want to learn. I still want to be wrong. Right. For sure. So if somebody watching this wanted to reach out to you, do you mind sharing your website or social media handle? Oh, like absolutely. Best way for somebody to sure. get in contact so, with you. Absolutely. Our website is www.matthewcorzingstudio.com. You can also find me on Instagram, matt.acting.coach or MCS Theater or MCS uh, LA or MCS Miami. Awesome. Well, Matthew, yeah. thank you so much for your time. We're rooting for you. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. This is awesome. It's good to get me talking and realize mm -hmm. things I didn't even know that I knew. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye. Have a great week and send me this link so I can see it. I'm looking yeah, forward well, to it. For sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Right, Thanks, Dan. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.